Hello and welcome to this introduction to Fermi Estimation with me, Mr McIver, here at the London Central and Northwest Maths Hub. What is Fermi Estimation? You can think of it as really rough estimation. Take an original calculation like this one. 4,367 times 89.7. Now in the past, you would have been told that the simplest way to do this in your head is to round it off like this. 4367 rounds off to 4,000, 89.7 to 90. We call this single digit rounding because we're rounding off each of our initial values to one single figure of accuracy, or one significant figure, as we tend to say in maths. If we're going to do a really rough estimate, we round it off to this, 1,000 times 10. Now, this is obviously going to give you a pretty rubbishy answer, but bear with me for a moment, because you need to understand the principle in which we're doing this, and then I'll show you the applications. And the way to understand the basis of this really rough estimation is to think back to what you know about standard index form. The number 4,367 can be written as that, 4.367 times 10 to the 3, while the number 89.7 can be written like that. Notice those powers of 10 you have there. That 1,000 is in fact the 10 to the 3, the power on the first number. Similarly, that 10 you have in our really rough estimate is 10 to the power 1. This is sometimes called order of magnitude rounding. All we care about is that we've got a number in the thousands multiplied by a number in the tens. Now, the trouble with this particular example is that our order of magnitude estimate is a bit rubbish. If we do the original calculation, we get that, 391,719.9. Our rough estimate of 360,000 isn't perfect, but at least it's in the right ballpark. On the other hand, our really rough estimate of 10,000 is out by a factor of 36. It's useless. We only use this type of rounding when we really have little or no idea of what the original numbers were. And we have to make some pretty wild guesses to, say, the nearest order of magnitude. This type of estimation gets its name from Enrico Fermi. He died back in the 1950s, and you don't need to know very much about him apart from this. He was a physicist, he worked in Chicago, and he was really good at this kind of really rough estimating. Fermi worked on the Manhattan Project in developing the atomic bomb, and when it was tested at the Trinity site in 1945, Fermi dropped a few pieces of paper during a blast and used the distance they traveled backwards as they fell to estimate the strength of the explosion as 10 kilotons of TNT, which is on the same order of magnitude as the actual value of 20 kilotons. One example of the classic Fermi estimation problems is to determine how many piano tuners there are in the city of Chicago, Illinois. At first, there seem to be so many unknowns that the problem appears to be unsolvable. That is the perfect application for our power of 10 estimation, as we don't need an exact answer. An estimation will work. We can start by determining how many people live in the city of Chicago. We know that it is a large city, but we may be unsure about exactly how many people live in the city. Are there 1 million people? 5 million people? This is the point in the problem where many people become frustrated with the uncertainty, but we can easily get through this by using the power of 10. We can estimate the magnitude of the population of Chicago as 10 to the power of 6. While this doesn't tell us exactly how many people live there, it serves as an accurate estimation for the actual population of just under 3 million people. So if there are approximately 10 to the 6 people in Chicago, how many pianos are there? If we want to continue dealing with orders of magnitude, we can either say that 1 out of 10 or 1 out of 100 people own a piano. Given that our estimate of the population includes children and adults, we'll go with the latter estimate, which estimates that there are approximately 10 to the 4th or 10,000 pianos in Chicago. With this many pianos, how many piano tuners are there? We could begin the process of thinking about how often the pianos are tuned, how many pianos are tuned in one day, or how many days a piano tuner works. But that's not the point of rapid estimation. We instead think in orders of magnitude and say that a piano tuner tunes roughly 10 to the second pianos in a given year, which is approximately a few hundred pianos. 
Given our previous estimate of 10 to the 4th pianos in Chicago, and the estimate that each piano tuner can tune 10 to the 2nd pianos each year, we can say that there are approximately 10 to the 2nd piano tuners in Chicago. Now I know what you must be thinking. How can all of these estimates produce a reasonable answer? Well, it's rather simple. In any Fermi problem, it is assumed that the overestimates and underestimates balance each other out and produce an estimation that is usually within one order of magnitude of the actual answer. In our case, we can confirm this by looking in the phone book for the number of piano tuners listed in Chicago. What do we find? 81. Pretty incredible, given our order of magnitude estimation. But hey, that's the power of 10. And I'd like to thank Michael Mitchell and Mark Phillips of TED Education for that very helpful animation. Well, piano tuners in Chicago are all very well. But what about estimating something a little bit closer to home? Say, the number of pupils there are in the UK school system. Once again, we've got a very broad, general-sounding question. Let's reformulate it just a little bit so we're talking about individuals of a particular age. And let's think of it as how many 5- to 18-year-olds there are in the UK, given that virtually all of this population are in full-time education. OK, well, we turn it into a bunch of kids of a given age. How does that help us? Well, we now need to do some order of magnitude estimation. And let's start with how many people we think live in the UK. Remember, we're only looking for an order of magnitude. So, 100,000, a million, 10 million or 100 million. This is a figure it's useful to have some idea of. 10 million is the population of London, so it's got to be more than that. 100 million looks like the most reasonable estimate. In fact, if you know the population of the UK is 65 or 66 million at present, you'll be aware of the fact that that estimate is too high. But remember, the point of Fermi estimation is that the over and underestimates kind of cancel out in the end. So let's go with this figure of 100 million and see how we get on. Next question, what's the approximate lifespan of people in the UK? Only one of those figures is remotely reasonable. A hundred. Clearly not very many people do live to a hundred, but a hundred is a much more reasonable guess than any of the other three. So we now have 100 million people living on average for 100 years. OK, so now we can think of our question about the number of 5 to 18 year olds in the country like this. Here's the population of the UK laid out in a line, 100 million of them. Well, if we assume that there are 100 million people in the UK and that on average they live to 100 years in age, then we can chop up the population into chunks like this and guess that there are about a million people in every one year interval. A million newborns, a million one-year-olds, a million two-year-olds, and so on and so forth. So, if we now mark out the number of 5 to 18-year-olds, we find there's a 13-year interval. And on the basis of 1 million people in every one-year interval, we arrive at a figure of 13 million people aged between 5 and 18. Now, remember, we've been rounding everything off to the nearest order of magnitude. We can't say 13 million we simply have to treat it as an order of magnitude. It's in the tens of millions, so we round it off to 10 million people. How good is that as an estimate? Here are the official UK government figures from 2015 for pupils in full-time education. Notice it goes up to 19, so we might be fractionally over the odds. And the key figures are those ones at the bottom. If we add up all the totals, we arrive at a figure of 7,917,767, about 8 million in education in the UK. This compares with our Fermi estimate of 10 million. It really is remarkable how useful Fermi estimation can be for getting a hold of seemingly impossible to grasp figures. If you want to have another look at that TED video, you can find it here. Meanwhile, have a go at the questions you've been set, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.